I don't have time to stand and give an intro because I have a lot to do today. In between the last video and the beginning of this video, I finished this road going all the way to the center. I've been adding lights along the side of the road so that at night I can see it and easily find my way back home. On the other side of this cave, there is a valley filled with flowers. That will be helpful when I need to start getting a lot of dyes. After this, it's pretty much one very long cave all the way to the center of the world. So I can start explaining what my plan is for the day. It comes down to one word, iron. I am going to be building an iron farm. I have already been preparing. That village next to me has a lot more villagers because I've been pumping them full of carrots. When I move them, I'm going to need 20 beds, which means I need a lot of wool, which means I need to find someone who has a lot of wool. Silly Blossom apparently has a small sheep farm, and she's been producing wool. She was supposed to be online today, but I haven't seen her log in yet. So my plan is to just run over to her house and see if I can find wool. I haven't been to her house yet. It's just another 800 blocks in this direction. It looks like she hasn't built a road, or at least she hasn't convinced Lady Adeline to build a road for her. So this is what I know so far. She has been working with Jaxasaur. Jaxasaur has been getting a lot of wool from her, and in exchange, she's been getting a lot of glass from him because he's in the desert and he has plenty of access to sand. She also stopped by when I was digging that long tunnel for my road and asked for diorite. I gave her three stacks of diorite. She said she may need some more. So I figure three stacks of diorite is worth enough wool to build 20 beds. Then I have to clear out an area big enough for all of the iron golems to spawn in and get pushed down into a hole. Below that I will place the beds and an area for the villagers. Hey, there's a road now. I am going to turn that villager area into a trading hall. This looks like a good place to get some mossy stuff. I'm going to have to come back here when I want to get some glow berries and moss and maybe some moss carpets. Because I'm making this iron farm underground, it is actually a rather big undertaking because I have to clear out so much area. And all of this feeds into what I was doing previously. I need iron so I can build many, many hoppers for my sorter. Okay, it looks like we're getting close. This is a nice little lake with a bridge over it. And I see plenty of birch. I know that that is Silly Blossom's favorite wood. So now that I am reaching her home, my goal is to find some wool. I see the diorite. I see glass. A big diorite glass house. Is that defined as modern architecture? And a garden. She's done a pretty good garden. There's a lot here. Pretty much everything is over here already. These must be melons and pumpkins. Cactus, vines. I like the way she used the trap doors to make little growing boxes for all of these. And it keeps you safe when you try to get these little berries. Looks like she's made room to plant a few more things. I'm going to head inside to see if I can find the wool farm. Hey, she has some flowering azalea. I want to get a couple of these to put in front of my house. Doesn't look like there's much inside here. The wool must be outside, but... Oh, is that the wool over there? I walked right past it when I came in. What kind of fencing setup is this? Do the sheep really stay inside the trap doors? I assume that the reason she's doing this is it's somehow easier to get the wool after you shear them. I think I'm going to go and check out the rest of her house to see what's inside here. Well, it certainly is big and diorite and glass as I was expecting. I think this is the way to get to the second floor. It's a nice view from up here. It's kind of like having a little porch over here. It looks like there's a lower floor. I wonder how you're supposed to get down there. I didn't see anything going down from the main floor here. I'm just going to walk around the side and see if I can get down to the bottom. Easy enough. Looks like this is set up for fishing and there's a mine heading down. This is a nice looking fishing dock. 
I can go fishing for floating llamas. This is what Silly Blossom tends to do a lot. She likes to be on the water. She does a lot of fishing. I want to check out that mine and see what she has down there. Maybe there's something good. This diagonal stairway gives a weird view. I kind of like it. She found a geode. I might have to come take some of this. That looks like clay. And I see glow berries in the distance. She's sitting on a lush cave. I'm going to have to grab some of this before I head back. I just wonder how far back it goes. Not too big. I'll just grab a little bit. The cool thing about moss is you only need one block, and then you put bone meal on it, and you get more and more moss along with all the stuff that grows from it, with the exception of glow berries. You have to get those from the cave. Silly Blossom didn't make it, but I got to go down and get some moss. I'm also going to collect enough wool from those sheep so I can make the 20 beds I need. Then I'm going to head back home and start working on my iron farm. As I started clearing out the area for my farm, I kept running into these little aquaphors, so I need to run around and get rid of all this water to make it easier to dig. And now I'm clearing out the area. It is a lot of digging. I've done about four blocks down so far, just outside of my main floors you can see down there. I need room for the golems to spawn, and below that I'm going to have an area for all of the villagers to be in, and directly below that I will have the beds. I built up the floor of the area where the iron golems will spawn. Temporarily I made an infinite water supply in the middle so I can place water all around the outside. The first time I made a farm like this I had a lot of trouble with the water. As soon as I put that last bit of water in the corner it would all join together and make one big lake. I found out that in the corners I need to raise up the water just one square then it doesn't join together and it keeps flowing into the middle. Having the water supply right here in the middle makes this a lot easier to do. But I'm concerned that I might miss a spot. So I'm going to place some dirt here and fill in the side. Once it's all smooth with no flowing water, I know I've filled every square. A torch will help me make sure I get it all in. That looks good on to the second side. Just in case you haven't done anything like this before, what I'm doing is placing water around the outside of this floor. It's all going to flow to the middle, which is going to have a hole. Any iron golem that spawns in this room is going to end up getting pushed into the hole. That's going to go down into a kill pit where the iron golems get killed and the iron from them goes into a collection area. It looks like I have two down, two more to go. I just had a bad thought. I'm wondering if I am off by one on this. I'm going to set these two sides free and see how far the water flows. It's as I thought. It's one too short. The water is flowing over the hole. I want it to stop at the edge of the hole. So I have to clean all this water up, dig the walls back one square all the way around, and redo it again. Here I am trying it again. I hope the water flows exactly where I want it to this time.
it stops right at the edge. I can do this all the way around and the water is going to push everything into this hole. Knocking out the last few blocks and placing the water. All the water flows right up to the edge of the hole. So I can get rid of my infinite water supply in the center of this room. And then start digging the hole down. And you can see where the villagers will soon be. But before I go get the villagers, I need to make sure they all have beds. In order to get this centered, I'm putting the beds basically in a circle right around that pole where everything flows down to the middle. There isn't a perfect way to rotate 20 beds around a square hole. But I do my best to get them so that the very middle of this farm is going to be the middle of the hole. And that is the center of where the iron golems will start spawning. So I got the hole made. It's cleared out. The water's flowing on the top. I got beds all around. And now I'm in the village. I've been breeding these villagers up by pumping them full of carrots. So there's plenty of them over here. I just need to go find one. And then I'm going to take it back. I'm going to take it back using a boat. This long river I put in here, so it's going to be easier to get them back on the boat all the way to the area where they're going to be, which is going to end up being like a little trading center. I just need to find a villager. This is actually my second trip. I forgot to turn on the recording on the first trip, and I found a villager standing and waiting right at the beginning of the river. This time it's like they all ran away. With all the villagers I bred, there should be plenty around here. There's one. I'm going to pop a boat right in front of his door so that when he comes out, he's going to be in the boat waiting on me. And I have a problem to fix. My river doesn't connect over to here. So I'm just going to dig a path that goes from this boat here and all the way out to where my river is. Just need to work out where's the best place to put it. I'm thinking I'll just do a straight line to go out so far, then turn and head toward the river. You can see that the villager is waiting for me in the boat. The plan is simple. All I have to do is steer this boat across land first, but I'm going to get to my river where it'll be easier. That's going to help me take it up a hill, then down some stairs and into their new home. Huh. Backing up is, oh, I think I have to open up this fence. I can't fit a boat through a one wide opening in a fence. That's better. Now I can back it up. Whenever I'm steering a boat like this, I prefer to be in this view because when I go into that first person view, I have a tendency to use the look left and right to try and turn, and that just really messes with steering the boat. I know we're off to a slow start, but it's going to speed up. Oh, here comes a friend to say goodbye. This is my second villager. I forgot to record the first one. Once I get this guy in, I have to come back and do this 18 more times. I was going to take it around the hill, but then I'd have to go through that nether stuff. So I went ahead and turned it, and it wasn't too hard to cut through all this dirt. I know most people build railroads when they do this. I never really had a problem with using a boat. It may take a little more time, but it isn't hard. Ah. 
the river is just up ahead. My concern is just getting into the river. I'm worried that once I pop off of this dirt, the boat could shoot forward. And if I go past the river, I'm going to have trouble getting back into it. I'm going to try and take it wide and turn so I'm going the same direction as the river when I come off the dirt. And I almost went over the edge. I got to get back into the water. Now it's clean sailing all the way back to your new home. Oh, I just saw him get angry. He lost his bed or his table or whatever it was he used to like. Don't worry. I got plenty of beds. You'll find one and I'm going to make you a new table. This is why I'm told using boats is hard. You can't get up a hill like this. But when you put water on it, it's not that hard to go up the hill. Huh. Now I'm going to go down into the cave. It was already there, but I connected it to the area where I'm going to keep the villagers. Huh. Watch your head. This first one can bump hard. A little concussion ain't so bad. You have a new home right up ahead. Okay, I have two villagers down here. I have to go get 18 more. I won't bore you with 18 more boat rides. I'll cut right to the end. And here's the trading hall stocked with 20 villagers. I tried to make sure I have all 13 job tables, but my main focus to begin with are the Fletchers who I can trade these sticks with and get some emeralds. It takes a lot of sticks, but sticks are very cheap and renewable. And with emeralds in hand, I have a lot of librarians. I'm going to be going through these librarians to get what I want. I want mending, I want silk touch, I want unbreaking. Those are my primary focus, so I may have to work with them for a while. For now, I'm just happy I have this entire project done, and I can move on to the sorting room. I have it all cleared out, and I have started the floor. I need a lot of chests. And with a lot of work, it is done. I have the floor complete. I have areas for all of my chests, and I've started filling them in. I have opened up behind the chest. That's where I'm going to be putting in the sorting mechanism. It is going to be tight, but I have a multi-level system in design. It starts by putting hoppers on the back of the chest. I toggle them so they don't drop into one another. This chest on the bottom one means that I can put the items that I get a lot of on the bottom chest and I have a second storage. The big problem with the sorter system is you have to keep using dirt or something to pillar up and move around to get in position to add hoppers where they need to be. That first part wasn't so bad. As I add more hoppers and get this thing filled in, it's going to get harder and harder to get into position to place things. I have an idea that I have not done before that I would like to try. I'm going to build an overflow system. The basic idea is that at the very top, I am going to redirect overflow into a barrel. And then I'm going to pull out of that barrel and send it into some overflow lines that could go to the trash or maybe input for a furnace. I'm just working on the general layout right now. Because I haven't really done it in the past, I'm not exactly sure what position to be in to make it lay out easily. And you may be wondering why I'm using a barrel. It is because I plan on having the hopper line feeding in be directly above these barrels. Barrels don't pull. If I had used hoppers, they pull and everything would get sucked into the overflow before it got into my chest. And now you can see how I'm going to have hoppers below the barrels pulling everything down into the overflow system. And now the system is done. This is a basic sorter. It works very well on bedrock. If you want to know how this sorter works, I made a lesson video where I go through building it and explaining how each of the components works together to make an auto sorter. Now I need to build about a hundred more of them. I don't have a hundred done yet, but I want to show an update. I am getting started. I have the first two stacks of chests done, three chests per stack, so I have six sorters. I've also started by putting the iron in because I have so much iron coming out of that iron farm, I have to store it somewhere. 
Next, I need to get that feed line going all the way around so I can send it to my overflow chest. And then I can put sorters all the way around. Now I want to show you something I discovered while I was working on this. You have to rename items when you build an auto sorter. My anvil's in the trading hall, and that's what you use to rename items. So I was heading into the trading hall with a stack of cobblestone to rename, and I saw an iron golem standing guard out front. I'll have to work on fixing that later. Right now I'm working on the auto sorter. It's been a long day. I built my iron farm. I built my trading hall. And I built this huge sorting room, and I started the auto sorters. So until next day, goodbye.